Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Knocked Conscious. Today I had the pleasure of speaking with Frank Holmes. He's the executive chairman of Hive Digital. It's the first data mining company for Bitcoin to go public. It was a great conversation. This conversation was recorded on Thursday, July 11th. Here it is. I hope you enjoy it. I understand you were Frank first Holmes is what we're going to call you if you're okay with that. You're the first in everything, right? Well, when it comes to crypto mining, that's for sure. I heard you were also first in gold, though. Holly mentioned something about yeah. just being an early the adopter. First, and... The first no-load gold fund. Oh, my gosh. Um, and uh, first smart beta 2.0 ETFs. So we have a superior gold stock picking ETF list in New York. And our biggest one is Jets ETF. Wow. So it tracks all the airlines and outperforms the New York Stock Exchange Global Index. So the idea of playing a quant approach works, and that's what we do. And that led me into Bitcoin because it's related to gold, and at the same time, it's all math. Yeah, it is. It is all math. And what's interesting about Bitcoin and gold, we, the beauty about gold is you have a physical thing that you hold on to, and Bitcoin's ones and zeros. And I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer, right? Anyone, myself, boomers, we don't understand the the physicality, right? We went, what's an email? No, we got a physical mail in the mail, right? How do you, exp- how do you cha- meet that challenge of expressing like what Bitcoin, the, the powers of Bitcoin, even though it's not a physical thing to touch? So there's a wonderful system I spoke about this morning uh, of looking at the world. And you can look at micro, an individual stock, and you can look at history. And it's called the complex adaptive system. And the complex adaptive system is a mixture of biology, it's a mixture of social sciences and computer sciences. And it is in Santa Fe. It is a derivative of the Manhattan Project, which the movie Oppenheimer. So it's think tank and they've been able to identify four pillars that identify and say Amazon will grow and prosper. It's really it just amazing. knows that it's going to happen. So what are the things that are important? Right. Well, there's the connectivity that we have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that you and I, we're one on one, becomes 11, not two. So you have to have that hyper experience, that quantum leap, as they say in physics. Yeah. And it's recognizing that groups of people can all of a sudden create a quantum leap. Yeah, it's almost like a collective consciousness, but not in a conscious way, but a collective action, collective event, collective something where it emerges out of that. And, and this adoption is phenomenal. And that's how actually viruses grow and spread. That's interesting. And it's how Walmart grew along the, uh, the, all the interstate highway system. It grew versus, versus Target. They I both start at the same time. Walmart's much bigger. And I love that argument. I remember, I, I think I remember when Kmart, they wanted to get in the Kmart space. And that's obviously see where Kmart and Sears are, right? Right. Um, they wanted to get in that space and they said, no, we've got these places. So they went more urban. And I think Target took that, or I'm sorry, yeah, they went more rural, absolutely. Rural. Right. The, I'm sorry, the, the Walmart went more rural and Kmart was more of an urban kind of base thing. And I wonder if Target looked at the urban as a greater shot at it versus... Well, they looked at the demographics too of your, um, the GDP per person. Okay. So and that they, makes sense. Th- that was, and they started to bring in people that design uh, sp- uh, things for clothes or whatever, had a designer's name to it. But Walmart was really fascinating how, how they grew that system. But coming back to Bitcoin, yes. you know, B- Bitcoin is like gold, is decentralized. And it's like Andy Warhol art. No one's one person controlling the art world. And it's about the adoption that someone says, well, we think that this artist is cool. This artist is, 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 has value because our adoption. And there's a law called Metcalfe's Law that says that if you limit the supply of any piece of art uh, or Bitcoin as it is, and you get broader adoption, then the prices grow exponentially. That would make sense. And, and I think that that's what uh, was the wake up call. The big wake up call for me um, because it was going to a consensus conference and seeing 3,000 young people spend how much money and they had already made all this money in another metaverse. It was in my world. <laughs> and, and, and it was like right. going on the movie scene of uh, Star Wars into the bar scene of Jabba the Hutt. Yes. Right, all, yeah. all the weird characters. Yeah. Well, that's what I walked into. <laughs> and, and I start to realize that they have built this Web 3 
and it's because these kids grew up as gamers, uh, mm -hmm. and when they went to bed, there was 30 million kids mining Ethereum. 30 yes, million. 30 million, wow. They go to sleep, uh, turn their GPU chips to mine Ethereum. If they produce two Ethereum a year, it was between three and $6,000 of income. I had a paper route. Right. right? They we can't really, there's that. no paper route no. in their world. So yeah, it's, and that's funny about that. We're talking once again the physical to the ethereal, but it's it's still real. It's still very real. It's just different, right? And quantum physics is that. Yes. And, and recognizing that you'd look to apply the math to it. So I, I think there was this big demographic shift, and and, and the wealth of my generation is going to pass on to your generation, and you are used to the digital world from gaming, uh, from the internet, whatever it is. My world was American Airlines. The closest thing I get to was mileage points. Yes. But what I noticed with those mileage points is that 20 years ago, it was 20,000 mileage points to go to Europe. Now it's 200,000. Uh, so they devalue. Inflation. Inflation. <laughs> and that's what governments do with paper money. Everybody. Some do it faster than others. America's done a wonderful job of doing it the slowest. Venezuela did it pretty quickly and got them into this whole thing, right? Let's, and, that's and, one good and that's example. that's part of my speech was, oh, okay. was Chavez took away property rights. And every time you take away property rights, you take away human rights. And, and Thomas Jefferson quoted about this a long time ago. And, and George Washington talked about the significance of private property rights. Right. So 1776 was a rebellion again against the king right. of England over property rights and taxation and my human rights. In 1215 was the Magna Carta, was the beginning of common law. And that was the real beginning. And I think in my research, 100 years later came the first patent laws. Wow. That's intangible. Yeah. Absolutely. I wrote it's this song. In. It's mine. Yeah. I have the rights to it. Right. So that intellectual property and all that. Intellectual right. property rights. So yeah. that became related to, to private property, property yeah. rights. Civil law never recreated laws to almost uh, ten centuries later. That's unbelievable. So, so on that, let's see. What's the question I want to ask here? Property rights. Back in the day, I think the United States didn't you have to own property to be able to vote? Correct. So that, that even speaks to how Jefferson looked at that back then, the philosophy of these people. And none of them were over 40. Most of them were in their 20s and 30s. Correct. These people were geniuses, and we need to go back to the system. What, so what they saw. It's so beautiful. And, and, and the complex adaptive system would say that you, the smart people would go back and cherry pick what was the best to add to the flavor the today. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that having these conferences like this and education, your podcast, um, which grown dramatically in the past 10 years, but for sure 20, but significantly 10, right. his social media platforms, uh, podcasts, uh, how many people during COVID, they lived off the podcast while they were working out. So we saw Peloton sales go through the roof. Right. Uh, but the same thing, we just found they were all working listening to podcasts. Right, they were. Uh, yeah. and, 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 it, and it really pushed the decentralization of information to immediate extents because you had the three major or the six news sources saying X and every other independent person saying Y. So which one is right? The, that conglomerate corporation that runs it all or the people that are share, freely exchanging right. information and knowledge? It's such a beautiful thing. It is, it really is. So how, how did you think to make the first data mining? Well, when I looked at the world of gold, they're both decentralized like Bitcoin. Um, one is tangible, one is non-tangible. Um, one is, is that I discovered that a lot of the Bitcoiners read from, the, I call the same Old Testament as gold investors. Yes. Uh, that there'll be imbalances between monetary and fiscal policies and fiat money will slowly get devalued with that and owning gold. So this century, gold has outperformed the S&P 500. Shocks yeah. people when I tell them that. It, it sounds crazy that the same weight of gold from 1960 could buy the house today, correct? It, correct. It, it has not lost its intrinsic value throughout time. It does have little fluctuations, obviously, but that's when we market and do those things, right? We dump silver on the market or something like that. And a big difference if you learn the history of it, those, those Vietnamese boat people that got out first had a gold tail, it was called a gram of gold. So gold became something of, of, I call it the great love trade around the world. 60% of gold demand is related to GDP per capita and it's for love. So the greatest GDP per capita was Asia. 
and India and the Middle East. And you just saw as they had more income, they bought more gold. Right. So we and have look at like, Dubai. I think it's like 99% of all gold passes, or something like 90% of all gold passes through Dubai at some point. And the Chinese example. want to, with the Shanghai Exchange, to be able to do the futures. Yeah. But it's, to me, it's really you know, interesting that Indian women wear six times the amount of gold that's in Fort Knox. What? Yeah, wow. it's a great data point. That's a beautiful thing. Oh my gosh, um, it's unbelievable. And recently this century, we had the Syrian women that got out first, took off their 24 karat gold bangle, and that's how they got out of that country mm. when the crisis was going on. So gold becomes this ornament of love and that can really be used. But Bitcoin is even more significant because we saw in East Africa um, the banking, the unbankables. And that was all of a sudden digital money off your phone and everyone would be buying and selling for 32 cents, for $3, back and forth. Right. And there was a huge boom in digital banking all through East Africa. So that just said, well, this, this is important for Bitcoin yeah. because now we can do digital transformation of wealth. Right. And you don't have to have a, a Kenya shilling as your backbone. You can also have Bitcoin and that's going to protect you from the government having bad policies. So you have oppression. Uh, you get dictators, look at Lebanon, you have Hamas coming in, uh, or Hezbollah, same sort of identity uh, funding from Iran, and, and they destroy that economy. Yeah. Um, There's it, it, just a destruction. And, and so when you see that and you say, well, how do people get protected? Bitcoin is their digital way. And having um, uh, 20 million, uh, or it's not 20 million, but having like 500,000 uh, Satoshis. Well, you can start buying them at 10,000 a Satoshi. You, you, you can break it down that Bitcoin. Uh, you can do it by parse meal on, on Robin Hood. So I right, do, that's what I have. I think I point zero two Bitcoin or something like that. And you, you can know? do it every month, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been on Stash, I think, is what it's, I have. Right, every $100 every month. Yeah. So that lent it when I found that I didn't, I was trying to launch a Bitcoin ETF in 2017. Just happened this year. And I realized in meeting with the regulatory world that the concern was a K KYC AML, anti-money laundering concerns. But if you're a Bitcoin miner, you create the original coin. Right. You don't have that problem. Right. I have virgin coins. Right. So today I have about 2,500 of them, which is worth about 140 million. Uh, may in, I, may in, I borrow one? <laughs> in, in Hive, and so that's been my vehicle, that I would only do green hydro energy, I recycle the energy. I heap buildings five times the size after I've done my Bitcoin mining in downtown Montreal. Uh, so and funny because one of those arguments is the energy that Bitcoin creates. And there's another data point, something about the energy that gold pre gold create, like the, the, the fiat creates too. It it's does. like, it's. But Ten so, times, right? It's it's. They're like, see, look at the small countries that Bitcoin. No, look at the amount of energy that the fiat system. You're absolutely creates. correct on that. And you think of Anne Rand's famous book on, you know, Atlas Shrugged, uh, on the page of explaining why gold is is made with risk and, and as energy of human beings. And well, there's energy is really the defining element. So money is energy. It is. It's all energy. It really is because it's an exchange of, you know, of a service, a good. Is we obviously have. If I give you something, it's obviously for an exchange of something. And I, I wouldn't move, voluntarily giving you that. And I can move a billion dollars of Bitcoin for a hundred dollars, less than a hundred dollars. You can't move a billion dollars of no, bonds, no. government bonds, for a uh, hundred dollars. Um, when I was just recently came back from Africa and Europe. Um, when you're buying with your, if you want to go to the ATM to get euros, they want to charge you 13.5% commission. Right. And so they charge you, they charge you interest to, they charge you to keep their, your money in their banks. Yes. They have negative interest rates, correct? Correct. Okay. And so yeah, you well, think, <laughs> so you think of, I could turn around and do Bitcoin for less than $10. Um, and so the real anti-Bitcoin comes from the banks. Yeah, uh, and and they're well. The I would think, it, and they and then they push the government lobbies to yes. make the regulations, right? Because they make the right, right. Uh, so they write the regulations. So it really is um, uh, a rudder and a sailboat doesn't tip over. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really important to own, I think, two to three percent. What we found when we launched Hive is that I had a, a, a my baby boomer uh, friends. They all want to buy, but they're reluctant. They're afraid of. Right of a bankman coming along and, and, and yeah, destroying it. Yeah. So they used Hive as a proxy. 
And so Hive was the first crypto mining company and it had explosive growth. It crashed down with Bitcoin, it went back up. But something we've always done is hodl. And we used to hodl Ethereum. Uh, and for your listeners, that's hold on for dear life with the volatility. It's very different for baby boomers to talk about stocks. If stocks fall, it's bad, it's no good. Bitcoiners are stack it, buy the dip. Yeah. Hold on for dear yeah. life. Hold on. It's coming. It's and, come back around, or at least it's coming back up. It's and, coming and so that has been really significant. The other data point that's really significant, there's 195 countries in the world. So you think of 195 central banks defining each of these countries' currencies, and you have now 18, over 18,000 nodes, peer-to-peer, -peer, which comes from the Napster model. Oh, right. Yeah, and I get that. I, yeah, I grew it up. It was so disruptive Napster. to music, and it yes. shows it works. Yes. Well, these nodes now, so China goes after the crypto space, it falls, it comes right back. Right. Because the, it's a global phenomena right. to recognize. So I don't think that Bitcoin's going to go away. I don't think Hive is going to go away. Uh, Hive is listed in NASDAQ, it's listed in Germany. Uh, we only source green energy. And now we're getting in the AI business because we had these GPU chips yes. that were used for mining Ethereum. Yes. So now Ethereum mining is gone, so now we repurpose them so for is, AI. Is it, was there a halving where it just wasn't... Was there well, something with it? They took it away oh, they from took it proof away. of stake. Okay. To, from proof of work to proof of stake. Okay. So I'm not familiar with those concepts, so I apologize. So, so when, just... when it comes to crypto, it's either proof of work, which you use electricity to validate the algorithm and the transaction, okay, yes. or you go to proof of stake and you basically have a now it's a, locked in a, a, a Excel uh, on steroids. Okay, got it on blockchain basically, okay. and and you can get more easily hacked or disrupted this way. Yeah. No one's been able to, to to hack into the Bitcoin right. and and hack a coin. And if someone tries to tamper with it, it merely gets in every ten minutes it gets caught. Oh wow. So the system and the peer-to-peer -peer self, system. Self-repairing system in a way, it's like, or it almost kind of- It kicks kinda, it out. Yeah, it kicks, that's, what, that's it crazy. It kicks it out. So that, it's almost like it's, 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 a, it's a tribe of 20 that someone got out of hand and they kick them out. They kick them out. But because those 20 are, can talk to each other and they can't be interfered by a group of 100 telling them what actually, truth. what's not true. Absolutely. For example, like telling them lies. And, that's really interesting. And I, I come from the gambling ground world. I remember when online poker was the same thing because the government couldn't, control and they talked about bad actors someone would make a million dollar bet on a bad hand just to transfer to a drug dealer or something that a was it abl is that what you called it yeah they, it was but it was the yeah. same the same the concept same narrative, same right. narrative. and and that government just cannot get enough and we look at the, even back to the mafia days it's like the government is taking money from everyone forcefully if you don't you're in trouble and with that money we'll protect you with it it's like, does that sound any different than anything else? well what's really <laughs> nice like, with all respect america has the best system of and all, all these other countries in the world. And, and, and it's just, the Constitutional Republic, I think, that really helped with that. And, and the balance of power. The yeah. only country in Europe is Switzerland that has the canton where there's tremendous state power. Yes. Uh, and and it's, they've always been neutral. I mean, they've and been so that, financial. Right. And, and, and so that Europe. country as a whole is a stronger currency right. than the rest of Europe. Uh, and it's recognizing those balance of powers, but there will always be imbalances between monetary and fiscal policies. Yeah. And that's why you own some gold. That's why you want to have some Bitcoin and you don't want to have a plate of it because that's like eating a plate of jalapenos. Right. But you want to have two to we three diversify. percent. And you diversify and, and it, it really helps you for long-term planning. That's beautiful. Frank, so before we go, if I hope I can ask one more question. The recent BRICS issue, Saudi doesn't sign the petrodollar deal, and BRICS is starting to come up with a gold-backed currency. What are your thoughts on any, uh, what, what's in store for the dollar or anything like that, if you have any prognostication? I don't, don't want to put you on the spot, but... I, I think that it's very politically motivated by Russia and China. Uh, China's been trying to get the Saudis to accept renminbi. The Saudis told them eight years ago that you have to have more gold to back your currency. So they became the biggest buyers of gold and biggest producing. So they're an important part of trying to legitimize themselves. But they have a closed economy. People don't realize you cannot use your American Express or your visa in China today. Right, because you know the SWIFT, I would assume it's the SWIFT, like we took SWIFT away from Russia so they couldn't even transact the dollars, right? Is that the same They're, type of no, issue? No, they just don't want anything to do. Oh, so they don't even let it in. No, no, you have to go and convert your money and put it into a WePay 
and then when you go there, that you can use it. And, and, and now they've got the people that they don't even want to use cash. So one of my analysts was saying that he forgot his toothbrush and shaving stuff, so he went to go and use cash, they wouldn't take it, then they would try to credit card, be the wrong credit card. Right. And so you're seeing that it's a closed economy. Well, therefore, the currency is not fungible. Mm. Therefore, and the same thing with Russia. So therefore, they're not going to be, so they're all really trying to do is to have an economic war with America. Right. Uh, and they're not going to have a military war. No. Uh, but so therefore, they'll push with an economic war. And it'll see what the politics with, with Saudi Arabia has. Um, but it, it's just part of, of this dynamic that the complex adaptive system explains. That's beautiful. Uh, and, and I think that uh, some, some American um, uh, bureaucrats get overzealous in the power they have, but it happens everywhere. You know what, we know what I find when I fly, when I have the Jets ETF. <laughs> and, right. And, and so you think the captain has all this power. There is a person that when you're going to check in, and if you're rude with them, all of a sudden you're not going to get on that flight. That's true. They have the power. They do. Now they're not making 60 grand a year. Right. And they probably even have a little bitterness and resentment. They already. have power. Right. And it's a one time in their life they, can they have power. And they can exude it. So you better be really polite to them. Yes. That's what I tell people. You'll be very polite. Yep. yep. Don't feel like rah, rah, rah. extra pleases and thank yous to everyone. And so you can get a government bureaucrat that all of a sudden feels that they have this excessive power and it comes back to backlash against on the global scene. But America has this incredible way of absorbing and, 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 uh, and coming back. Yeah, adjusting. Re, adjusting, you know. and I think it's because we're common law. I yeah. think it's because common law is, is a greater protector of private property rights and, and then human rights. Um, and I think that politicians uh, have to always be really sensitive over that or they won't get elected. Absolutely. President Trump was anti-Bitcoin. President Trump now is pro Bitcoin. Right. Well, I don't. I don't know if he knows what it's. Where Biden has a problem, I don't think Biden knows what he said yesterday. Trump doesn't remember what he said because it changes depending on what the populist idea seems to be. Right. See, I like. I like the guy. He seems fun because he seems to be against the group. But we don't know. I don't know a lot of what he thinks because it seems to be populist in a lot of ways. I, you know? I think that you brought it. Which way is the money blowing? <laughs> thank you. Thank but you. I'm glad like, I had that insight. He is correctly. thinking which way is the money blowing. Right. He knows. He knows. Look, the, the and, guy's and, smart. And you have 20 percent. Most of the Democrats that I know, lawyers and friends, etc., they're pro Bitcoin. Right? They, Beautiful. But there's the fringe 20% that, yeah. uh, that are like the zealots. And the Republican Party has their zealots. They have more too. of them. They have probably have more because conservative. It's like they don't understand. They, I've always talked with conservatives. Ha asking a conservative to explain why they believe something is almost impossible because they can't eloquate They because it's worked for thousands of years. Like that's the conservative mindset is it's worked. Tradition works. That's why we do it. Not It's almost inexplicable. You can't really explain. New concepts you have to really get almost deprogram some of the traditional pieces and how does it change the tradition yeah, yeah it's it's a yeah. it's a good it's a good way but you find that when you have the centralized any organization it it goes into relying on um those traditions of value to stay in power great uh, well thank you frank so much for this time it's great i hope we get more because i i just don't know enough so i want to i want to learn a little bit drink from the fire hose and hopefully we can have another conversation absolutely in the great we have frank holmes the first data mining bitcoin hive still here Twenty five thousand bitcoins how many no. how many no I, I mined that but you mine that but right? I have, you mine that but on my balance sheet i have t more than 2500 and that's more than 2,500 than I have. So. It's 140 million. Uh, Frank, thank you thank so you. much. Really thank nice you. to meet you. Hey, everybody, check out Frank. Frank, do you have anything else you'd like to share? Uh, websites, I have, all I your have social have usfunds.com. I have readers in 80 countries, 100,000 weekly readers. Great. Uh, that talk about my global travels. And I was just with the president of, Z of Zambia. Um, and, uh, and last month I was in Paraguay. So I like to meet, like you're doing with this, with presidents of countries and Absolutely. what are their policies before my global investment funds look to put money into that country. I love that. Uh, and Zambia is copper, the second biggest producer. And it was really, HH is a phenomenal guy because he took on the Chinese. Yeah. And he's pro-American. 
well, most of the other countries around him are not. Right. So I, it was really my honor to be able to hear, and he has an MBA from uh, in England, so he's uh, done a great job in positioning the country. That sounds great, and actually having a precious metal, I mean, copper is a precious metal, it's so conductive, it's beautiful piping and everything, it's such a use, versatile metal. If you're yeah, into, that, into renewable energy, copper is the that goal. Is, that is it, that is it. Thank Frank, you. Frank, thank you again. Take care. Appreciate it, thank you, take care. See you. Nice meeting you. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must say, good night, sweetheart. Good night.